Hello. You know, I know y'all enjoy the fellowship and all that, but we're going to get started. And we're going to be able to, uh, I want to thank all y'all for being here today. And, you know, it's kind of strange, isn't it? Yeah. We're supposed to be at the hotel today. Is <laughs> <laughs> that right, Jim O'Brien? That's great. Help out. Is there a sister? <laughs> Russell, what's going on, man? Uh, I forgot to save him. Come on. Come up, open the door, Russell. Oh, Jack, are you here for real? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, Jack? Well, we did. Come on up, brother. Thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that we have to first you before the beginning of all time. You have ordained that this day we come and come back again. This home place, this place where so many people came to know the Lord, this place where so many people just shared the fellowship, so many people were got the message of the gospel of the risen Christ. We thank you for that, Father. We ask you to bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies that is in this place. Let every hand that bears the service be served with the blood of Jesus on it. So everybody that partakes of this food will feel the power and the presence of the risen Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to set upon this place. So we dedicate this place to the the people that are here, the things they say, the things that we do, that always be acceptable on your sight. We we'll give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me just do this, give Tom a plug. A lot of the work you see done here, Tom worked very close with my boy, and uh, he did a lot of architectural work. And uh, let me make sure this is good. Everything that was done here, from the time through my boy and not me, I had nothing to do with it. And I never come in here to the last Friday because they asked you to let them do it, I said, I'll be waiting. So we can make sure that, hey, if you give me the compliment, give it to the one and bring the other two of the other. Okay? Now, what we're going to do today is, uh, hey, Brent, you, Brent, come up, just for a moment. I know you're busy, you're running there. <laughs>
Thank you, Lord God, for blessing us with a new day, a new opportunity. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness and for your gracious love and compassion that you showed to us then. Thank you for your word, Lord. Give us instruction how to get to know you. Thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit as our guide to teach us and help us to learn how to walk out our faith. Thank you, Lord God, for your son Jesus that sits at the right hand to intercede on our behalf. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing us with angels to watch over us. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the desire to want to get to know you. We give all praise and honor to you, Father. I thank you for my two sons who work very hard and they learn a lot by putting this place together. Thank you, Lord, they did it without me, which is a blessing. And Lord, I thank you for all my friends that have been praying for us and who stood with me and who have been there for me. I just give you praise and thanks for all the wonderful gifts that you've given us in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord God, as we enter into our time together, as we open your word, and as we listen to your song, as we sing songs to you, let us all rejoice and give praise to you because you are such a wonderful God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Come on up, baby. Thank you because you're happy. Tell the Lord you don't want to sing. Tell the Lord you don't want to sing. That's how you got to do it. You don't be talking to your cousin to me. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. she was, but we don't we don't get no way. You know, I was thinking when I came here this uh, this afternoon, I walked across that threshold and I said, There's Way no God way. hold your mind. There's no huh? Can you hear me? Okay. Um how great God is. Every last one of us have been touched by God this year in so many ways. And he's not finished. And so we should never ask the question why. But the song that I'm going to sing is kind of an answer to why we should not. And it's a song that we're all familiar with. And as I'm singing, if you feel that to sing and join in, please do so. Because I hope that it ministers to you. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is all.
son Joshua who served in the Marines and uh, going through a little PTSD so if we could just have a quick word of prayer Amen. brother Ray could you uh, lift up a word of prayer for my son uh, everybody will pray but we're going to depend on you so Joshua right now just called me said dad I'm going through something I said son I'm in the service I'll call you right back but well, let's ask the Holy Spirit to come and intervene in his behalf and of course there's other prayer requests here as well I'm sure. let's give our pastor the right reverend the prophet, the apostle, <laughs> the brother like no other, the master of disaster can't say it no faster. Too strong to be weak, too sweet to be sour. He can't take credit as all God's power. The most unworthy. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to stand in faith and to stand in agreement. And so, Father, we lift Joshua up. We plead the blood of Jesus from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And we declare, Father God, that you're still a mind regulator. And so, Father, we close every door that's been opened through trauma, and we just declare that the blood of Jesus seals it. We declare that the power of heaven is in agreement with us. And so, Father, we just release your word. Your word declares that if any two is green and touching, then we could decree a thing. And so we decree wholeness in the name of Jesus. Father, you know us name by name, circumstance by circumstance, every need that stands in this place. We declare it done now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And, Father, we just speak grace and power for the word that's about to go forth now in Jesus' mighty name. We all say? Amen. Give yourselves a hand. Come on, somebody. <laughs> well, of course, if you have your mind, you can turn anywhere because it's all good. No matter where I start, it's all good. Amen. But I'm going to go over to Mark chapter number nine. Mark chapter oh. number nine, one verse. Just got back in from Tampa, Florida, uh, speaking at a, what's called One Year Millionaire Live event. Uh, the first guy I ever led to Christ when I got saved 40 years ago, uh, Myron Golden, who's an evangelist and uh, pastor for several years, and now uh, God's used him in the marketplace to teach him. Um, God's people principles of wealth and he's got perhaps the most genius mind I've ever seen when it comes to taking the Bible and, and business and showing how they relate together and uh, and so uh, we're at that event and then two of his brothers that led to Christ 40 years ago hadn't seen him man dear. so it was like a family reunion almost and one of them was a missionary two of multi-millionaires and we all were just together and just giving God the glory and praising God and we got to do a seminar uh, on money and success, but all based on Bible principles. Amen. Amen. See, we believe it's time to tell the truth about the truth. Amen. I go places, I quote Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, and they all, oh, that guy's educated. And then I say something about the Bible, and they're like, uh-oh, what are those, right? <laughs> it's even that bad in some churches these days. Hello. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to stop. All right, let me go back. Okay, okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they're looking for more motivation than you are the word. Come on, somebody. But the best motivation I know is the word, and not just that, it's a breakthrough, amen? amen. But Mark 9, 29, Jesus said, how, how come at this kind can come forth by nothing but by what? Prayer, Prayer and fasting. But by what? Mark chapter 9, excuse me, Mark chapter 9, verse 29. <laughs> so, so real quick, the background of the story is, again, this man brought his son to Jesus and said, listen, this, uh, the demons come into him and cast him in the fire and his boys. And, and Jesus said, how long has it been since he was a little child, right? And he said, I went to your disciples and I asked them, well, can you help me? 
How many y'all know people today are looking for help? Come on, somebody. And people are looking for help. And the problem is sometimes the place that they go for help, they can't get help from there. Now, it's bad when you go to the house of God and folks in the house of God are powerless to be able to help you. Amen. Hello, somebody. I mean, he, thank God he didn't go to the world. He went literally to what's the symbol of the church. He went to the disciples, my friend. He went to the ones trained by Jesus himself, but still he couldn't get any help. But I'm so glad he didn't stop there. Come on now. See, if you want to break through, sometimes you don't get it one way. you got to go another way. Hello, somebody. And so he says, I'm going to go to the Lord himself. And he said, okay, Lord, I need you to help me. And so Jesus, again, cr creates this miracle. And the son now is, first of all, he falls down like he's dead. Now, you can imagine that, my friend. By the way, if you and I were there, we'd be like, uh-oh. <laughs> and I come to tell you, my friend, oftentimes before you got to get a breakthrough, you got to have a breakdown. I said, okay, okay. I, I'm glad so, somebody was tuned in. Okay, I said, oftentimes before you, see, everybody praying for a breakthrough, but they forgot to tell you before you get your breakthrough, you first got to have a breakdown. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I claim the blood. I ask for your special anointing as only you can give. In Jesus' name, speak to our hearts, Lord, and more importantly, yeah. flow through me, I pray. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. Amen. So I'm going to preach on this kind of a breakthrough. This kind of a breakthrough. Now, now they call me Dr. Breakthrough, and I always got to tell people up front, is Dr. Breakthrough, I can't provide the breakthrough. Brother Ronnie, I just prescribe the breakthrough. But when people follow God's breakthrough prescription, God Almighty provides a breakthrough they desire and deserve. And what's a breakthrough? It's exploding through barriers that at one time seemed insurmountable. See, a breakthrough is like this man at 38 years, my friend, and couldn't get any help. But in one instance, when he meets Jesus, of course, he even got it messed up because Jesus said, what would you have me to do? And he said, well, I have no man when the water's troubled. I didn't ask you that. <laughs> you know what's amazing to me? Most folk will tell you what they don't want, but they don't and can't tell you what they do want. Hey, Lord, this man, until you get clear on what you want, it's clear you'll never get it. Hello, somebody. I said, until you get clear on what you want. And listen, this man is talking about, well, I have no man when the water is troubled. See, again, my friend, oftentimes when God starts doing things in you in certain situations, we start trusting in the situations instead of trusting living God. He didn't need the water to be troubled. He didn't need an angel to touch the water. He had the one that gave the power to the angel in front of him, but he didn't recognize it. Oh, what did God would be like A.B. Simpson? Once it was a blessing, now it is the Lord. Once it was a feeling, now it is his word. Once his gifts I wanted, now to give her own. Once I sought for healing, now himself alone. All in all is Jesus, of Jesus will I sing. Everything is Jesus, and Jesus is everything. Then we can just get back to that, and here it is, healing in the flesh, saying, what would you have me to do? He said, I just want you, because when I get you, I get everything else, amen? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Fear not, little flock. Here's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. For 38 years, my friend, he suffered. And in one instance, bam, he got his breakthrough. For 12 years, this woman had an issue of blood. For 12 years, she had the problems, my friend. And again, she went to the doctors like most people did, and she didn't get any help. As a matter of fact, they charged her a whole lot of money to make her worse. <laughs> Let that sink in. <laughs> they charged her a whole lot of money and to get her worse. She could have said, I can do bad all by myself. And the one thing, when you go to get help, you get hurt. And there's a lot of people experience that in church today. They go to get help, but they end up getting hurt, my friend. And one of the reasons why, I'll tell you why, is because hurt people who have never been healed by the grace of God will end up hurting people. Come on now. We got so many hurt folks in our churches that have never, listen, here's one of the reasons, because they've never been healed. Why? Because they've never been able to reveal what's really wrong with them. Watch this. Anything that's hidden can never be healed. But thank God, anything that's healed never has to be hidden. Come on, somebody. Amen. And the church ought to be the most transparent group of folk, my friend. But I'm telling you this, my friend. Twelve years this woman had a problem. And yet, my friend, she said, but if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Come on, somebody. If I could just touch him. And you know the story. That touch, 
I'm talking about my friend. I don't know about you. I don't just want a breakthrough. I want a, this kind of breakthrough. The kind that man can't explain. A, this kind of breakthrough. The one that people can't take credit for. This kind of breakthrough. When God and God alone shine. I used to marvel at the men and women used of God. And now I'm learning to only marvel at the God who uses men and women. Because it's all him. Acts 19, 11, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Was it Paul's hand? No. It was the God who used Paul's hands. And God says, I want to be in partnership. So if you'll just surrender, watch this now. You got the easy part. If you just do the submitting, I'll take care of everything else. You submit your hands, I can use it. You submit your you submit your so-called money, I'll use it. Come on, somebody. Ain't yours anyway. We're just stewards. Hello, somebody. You submit your so I'm saying, my friend, listen, I'm telling you, we get so impressed one with another, looking at this one and that one, and really it's all about Jesus. But we gotta be like these disciples, my friend, and say, okay, he they was honest enough to say, okay, something is wrong. We thought we was the deal. Now we know we ain't as much to deal as we thought we would. Right, we need some help. Jesus said, I'm glad. That's all you needed to do is come to me. So I'm going to help you. So is, you want this kind of breakthrough? Is this what you want? Yes, sir. Okay, here's how I go and come. Pray and fast. So I'm going to give you three simple things and take my seat. Number one, I want you to notice it's going to take, first of all, focus. He said, oh, ye of little faith. Watch this now. See, the problem was the disciples were focusing so much on the demonic activity. They were focusing so much on what they saw in front of them that they didn't focus on the one who could work through them. <clears throat> okay, let me see. They were focused. On, see, watch this. You have a giant in front of you, but the giant in front of you is but a midget compared to the God who's inside you. Come on, somebody. And we got to learn to shift our focus. We're focused on the wrong thing. And so when you focus on what the Satan is doing, and when you focus on what the world is about, and when you focus on all the problems, my friend, then your faith may be drained and pulled down. And the first thing Jesus said, oh, faithless generation. In other words, my friend, he was upset because of the lack of faith. Amen. See, we preached this. I preached it wrong for about 35 years, so I, I can't have problems with nobody else that preached it wrong. But I was talking about, oh, Jesus wept, you know, and, and they like, oh, man, how Jesus loved Lazarus, you know, and he was dead. And, and John 11, 35, Jesus wept, and they said, oh, how he loved him. Oh, he did love him, but he didn't love him any more than he loves you. But he didn't love him because of the tears. The tears were the demonstration of his love. The tears was a demonstration of the next verse. This shows he was brokenhearted because they didn't believe. There you go. Come on now. Amen. Like, what is it? I'm God. What does it matter if he's dead? What does it matter? It doesn't matter. Yes. I'm here now. Yes. I'm the resurrection and the life. Yes. Jesus didn't weep because Lazarus was dead. The Bible, as a matter of fact, said he's dead. And the next verse, and I am glad. Why? For your sake. He knew what he was going to do. Yes. I hate to tell you this, but sometimes. Tragedy happens in our life, and God says, I'm glad. Right, like, what? Because I, I, I know what I'm about to do. <laughs> I'm going to let you hit rock bottom so you know I'm the rock at the bottom. Come on, somebody. But if you're going to have a, this kind of breakthrough, you're going to have to have a breakdown before you break through. You're going to have to break down your ego. Come on now. E-G-O, edging guidance out. You're going to have to break down your ego. E-G-O, edging greatness out. You're going to have to break down your ego. E-G-O, edging growth out. Come on now. I've never seen so many Christians that know everything. I mean, it's bad enough for the ones that so-called go to the go to the cemetery. I, I mean, the seminary. <laughs> By the way, I went and I resurrected the one I went to. But anyway, uh, hello. Oh, I was a handful for them. Come on, somebody. I didn't know they didn't really believe what they was teaching. I, I just put them to practice. I was getting miracles. Like, hey, y'all, you know. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? It really works, huh? <laughs> But no more is going to take focus. See, 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 you remember that woman that lost her, her husband and she was about to lose her children to the debtor and she came to the man of God and she said, I'm about to lose my children. And the first thing he did was he said, what do you have in the house? He shifted her focus. See, she was focused on what she was losing. She was focusing on what she had lost. She was focused on what could go wrong. He said, let me help you to focus on what you do have and what God can use to leverage and get what you don't have. Come on, somebody.
somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Number one is going to take focus. You can, we got to shift our focus, my friend. See, when you get like the woman and focus on if I can just get to Jesus, come on, somebody. Yeah. Then we'll be all right. But we focus on each other. We focus on each other's faults. We focus on our own faults. We're focused on how much we haven't become and what we haven't done. And most of the preaching today actually helps remind you who you're not. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Look, I told you, man, every time I go to church, I feel worse and worse and worse. I said, if anything, the church is set up to help set you free, not put you in more bondage. Yeah, that's right. Don't bow your head. Ain't time to pray yet. Okay. <laughs> but this kind of breakthrough, number one, is going to take focus. We, we got to reshift our focus to him. Because, see, regardless of how bad things are, when you focus on him, everything's all right. Yeah. See, see, all the darkness in the world can't put out light. But one little speck of light distills the darkness. Yeah. And we're so focused on the darkness, my friend. Hello. Jesus said, no, no, y'all, see, y'all, 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 y'all got it all twisted. Y'all focusing on this world. You focusing on No, no. You got to learn to have an eternity focus, my friend. You, you got to learn to have a focus on eternity. The Bible says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Why? The things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Do you know everything that you can see was made by something that you can't see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. And yet we believe more in the seen than we do in the unseen and un how do you think keeps that big old Boeing 747 up in the air? Come on, somebody. It's something invisible called air. What do you think keeps that table together? It's a bunch of invisible things called molecules. And who do you think controls it all? We gotta keep focused on him. Number one, it's gonna take focus. Number two, it's gonna take faith. See, by the way, what you focus on will determine your lack of faith. Or your doubt. Your faith or your lack of faith. See, watch this. If we focus on what he has done, if we focus on what he's promised, then our faith is strong. That's why the just shall walk by faith, not by sight. But if we focus on what we can see, if we focus on just what we've experienced, do you know your experience is not theology? Oh, wait, can I help you on something? I know y'all keep talking about revelation. I don't need no harm. There ain't no new revelation underneath the sun. All you need is illumination on what's already been revealed. So every time somebody's saying revelation, no, you just got an illumination on what's already been revealed. Come on, somebody. He's shining the light. It's all revealed. We just need to have our eyes open. Luke 24, 45, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Psalm 119, 8, to open thy mine eyes. Why? That I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Listen, the water was already there, but Hagar couldn't see it because she was so in her distress. Hagar couldn't see it because she was so down and out. Hagar couldn't see it, my friend, but once her eyes were opened, it was there all the time. We're gonna have to, this kind of breakthrough. First of all, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to focus, reshift our focus. Number two, we gotta have faith. We gotta have faith. And we gotta have faith, my friend. Not in what we can see. That's not faith. The currency of heaven is faith, and faith is taking God at His word, whether it looks like it's gonna work or not. Faith, faith is a, it's like the lady that told the deacon. They said, "Well, we need this seat." She said, "No, no, this for, this for my husband." He said, oh, "Okay." Yeah. And so, so, so it's okay if I tell again. Okay, because I just need to hear myself. You, you know, sometimes we pray. actually can I tell you the truth? True preaching is one doubter preaching to a bunch of doubters trying to get us all to believe. Y'all yeah, get that next week. Like the man, Lord, I believe, but help them unbelieve. There's this part. Because see, if we were true believers, my friend, hello, somebody, we would never even be shocked talking about. Man, I can't believe God did that. Really? Did it ever occur to you? Nothing ever occurred to our God. Yeah. Yeah. But watch this. So, so they had a big old crowd and they needed extra seats. And the usher came by and said, I, I, we need that seat. And she said, oh, oh, my husband's coming. Well, he's thinking she's, you know, he's out in the parking lot, right? Man, service after service. Now, now wait a minute now. now. Now this is month after month. Wait a minute now. 
Now it gets to be year after year. Same lady wait the same husband coming. Thirteen years later, he showed up. But he was already there. She already saw him. Come on, somebody, by faith. She was like, no, he's here, my friend. And I'm telling you, when we get that kind of faith, when everybody thinks you're crazy, talking about, Savior, he ain't. Look, he wasn't here last month. He won't be here this month. He ain't going to be here next month. I bet she said, watch him see. Watch him see. Watch him see. Come on, somebody. And I think that's the thing that kept Joseph. He said, I had a dream from God. I don't care what happens to me. You can take me down all you want to. Because I understand you got to have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough. The boy fell down like he was dead first. Come on, somebody. So you always, I've never seen anybody with a great, massive breakthrough that didn't first go through a breakdown. He'll strip you of everything you have, my friend. Strip you of everything you trust in. Strip you of everything. Sometimes you even thought you believed it. I heard one great preacher say this years ago. I thought he was crazy when he said it. He said, until a man gets to a place where he doubts everything he ever believed, I don't even want to hear it. Come on now. Come on. I'm like, I ain't never going to get to that place, bless God. Well, you do know my middle name's Peter, right? Okay. Man, some of y'all are slow, aren't you? A merry heart do a good like a mess. I'm trying to like put it, pour it on, and then kind of. Okay. It's gonna take. Help me out, number one's gonna take focus. Huh? Say number one, focus. Oh, okay. so, so number two is gonna take faith. Hey. See, the Bible says, they said, can God, Psalm 78, provide a table in the wilderness? The Bible says, God heard this and was mad. See, see, instead of saying, can God, they should have been saying, God can. God can, not can God. Why is the Christians always talking about, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? What if it works better than you thought? What if an Ephesians 3.20 shows up? Now to him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all, you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Stop shutting down the power by having the wrong focus. Stop shutting down the power by not tapping into your faith. Until stressful. <laughs> Psalmist said, My heart's fixed, oh God, my heart's fixed. Number two is going to take what? Faith. What? Faith. Forsaking all, I trust Him. It's going to take faith. It's going to take what? Faith. Watch this. Find answers in the heart. David said, My reins instruct me in the night season. Amen. See, God already knew everything was going to come up against, and He already put in us. Because he knew what was coming up ahead. But the process he gets it out is pain. I mean, I, I, I've said this before, and y'all might have said it again, do you? Remember, God made Adam, he said, Adam needs some help. I got a question. Dr. Marlene, wh wh where is God going to find the help that Adam needs? It was already inside of him. So, what was in Adam? that he needed, he didn't even know. So God said, I'm going to have to help him pull it out. It's going to be a painful process. Matter of fact, everyone had to cause so much pain, I'm going to have to put him to sleep. <laughs> and so God, in his infinite mercy, reached down with the hand of omnipotent into the man and pull out of the man yeah. what was in the man yeah. the 
that he didn't know was there. Yeah. And oftentimes on your way to a breakthrough, God's going to allow you to break down. Why? Because he's going to start pulling out of you what he put in you that you couldn't afford to know was there for yeah. a good time. Blessed by my own preaching. Hey. <laughs> Number three. We don't want to hear this part, but I've got to tell you. It's going to take fasting. That, 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 that is not a curse word, y'all. Come on. Now. Fasting. She didn't like turn your plate down. You mean like, you mean like, don't eat? Yeah. But, wasn't the first temptation of man over food? Mm -hmm. There you go. And wasn't the first thing Jesus tempted with was some food after he, mm -hmm. Brother, I've never seen this before. He didn't have time to fast right there. Uh -huh. Hello, somebody. Hello, it's got to become part of a lifestyle. It. It's got to be part of a lifestyle. We say, God, I'm willing to put down the visible. I'm willing to put something down Jesus. so I can grab up. I'm willing to put something down. It's something about fasting, my friend, that all of a sudden, my friend, your spiritual senses get more in tune. Now, now your fleshly senses get more in tune as well. Yeah. You ain't never smelled something so good till you start fasting. Come on, somebody. Oh, good gracious, does it smell good. Uh -huh. And you just got to learn to say, God, like my body's crying out for this food. Let me cry out for your power, Lord. Let me cry out for your presence. Let me cry out, God, I need you to work. I need you to do a breakthrough, Lord. Unlike anything's ever been done before, oh God, I need you to show yourself strong. Now, listen, my friend, I'm telling you, I I'm not... I'm not preaching what I like. I'm not preaching what I heard. I'm preaching what the master said. And he said, now if you want this kind, and for this year, my friend, I said, God, I've had me some breakthroughs, some incredible breakthroughs, but I want this kind of breakthrough. So you've got to turn your plate down. You've got to turn your plate down. Now, and now some of you have some physical issues and and you know you may have to just fast from certain foods or you know, I know some folks do a meat fast, a Daniel fast. I don't care. Do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something. Stop saying, well, I would, but I. No, get your B-U-T-M out of that place. Yeah. One guy said, I'm going to fast for my messiness. <laughs> he said, I'm so messy. All this. I'm just going to fast for that, man. He's like, well. He, and, and, and so he, then he called me the next day. He said, well, you know, now I'm going to fast from sugar. Mm -hmm. Then he called me three days later. He said, you know what? I just, God said, just fast, fast. Just like, you know. And so he called me a week later. He said, you ain't going to believe this. I said, oh, yes, I will. <laughs> I said, now, if I went, and probably if I went fast, and I made up, I believe now. Because he, he said, man, I'm going to read like four or five chapters of the Bible a day, you know. And, and he said, I, I can't get through one chapter. And it's taking me twice as long to get through one chapter than I normally do in five chapters, so I guess maybe God's more interested in me getting something out of the Bible than just saying I read all these chapters. There you go. So, maybe. All right. <laughs> 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 Sometimes I can't get off a verse in two hours. The most important thing is that he's speaking to you. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling you something, my friend. I just remember as a young teenager here, people talking about fast, and I was like, man, they're crazy. I, 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 I can't do that. I'm a martial artist, man. I break boards and bricks, and I, I'd be too weak. Hello. I was rationalizing. And I'm from the hood. I mean, come on, man. One of my brothers might bow up against me, and I'm like, you <laughs> I said, now we're going fast. The whole church going fast. I was like, oh, man. I ain't got shorties now. The pastor said it. And I fasted one day. I had the wrong spirit. It was like from 6 o'clock one night to 6 o'clock the next. And at 5.58, I had my plate fixed. I was saying, 
Susie insists, pump egg for Fuji's name. Come on, come on, come on. But God honored that little feeble attempt. I said, okay, well, let me try three days. Let me try three days. I failed a bunch of times and, you know, and, and day and a half, and all of a sudden it was looking too good. And, and then I learned a secret. I learned to shift my focus from the food to the bread of life. And I made it three days. And then I made it seven days. And then I made it 11 days. And then I made it 20 days. Then I made a 30. I'm saying, listen, my friend, and here's what I'm telling you to do. I'm telling you, whatever God, you just ask God to speak to your heart, my friend. Well, this is a day fast, a three-day fast. I don't know, my friend, but I'm telling you something, my friend. I'm telling you there's some things that's going to be accessed. And listen, it's not that you're trying to bend the arm of God. To, no, 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 my friend. You're just following the plan that he said. But here's the main thing, my friend, is that when you turn back your plan, that, that's just a thing, a thing of sacrifice, Romans 12, too. Uh, present your body as a living sacrifice. You're sacrificing sacrificing something, my friend, and you'll notice your spirit will get stronger, and your faith will get stronger, and you'll start crying out for God, my friend, and all of a sudden, you'll find yourself in a conversation with people, but the Lord's speaking to you, and you'll find yourself able to talk to people, and talk to the Lord at the same time, and you'll find your... Come on. This guy. I had enough of that kind. I had enough of the good kind. I needed this guy. I need a supernatural touch from God. Thank God. And God alone gets the glory. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Except for what he says. So John 2, 5, what's over he saith unto you do it? He says, give me a day. Can you, can you walk with me? Give me two days. Give me three days. And, and it's not the actual thing. It's the spirit, my friend, of it. It's your heart. But I can tell you, I challenge people. I close with this. So I came with this crazy idea. I got this mentoring program. And I said, uh, I'm going to take 40 years of what I've been preaching and teaching on breakthrough. I'm going to boil it down into 21 of, of the most powerful points. Just, just, just the nuts and bolts, right? And so it's kind of like, how many of you hit someone with a hammer two or three times? And made up? You hit it 21 times? Something gonna break. Yeah. Even the microphone, right? Something gonna break. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm boiling down, 21 day. So every day, two to five, you'll get a two to five minute video. I said, every day. And I said, and so and, and so here's what I said. And I said, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I said, it's crazy. Y'all probably never heard anybody doing this. So I, I, I charged this little ridiculous price, just $20. I said, and you'll get all my principal sets, but here's the thing. And I said, by the way, I've been paid as much as $47,000 to speak one hour on on just one of those principles. So I'm going to bring it all down to y'all and, and, and get, and so, so people join, I said, now here's what's really crazy, so what's it? I said, I'm going to fast for the next 21 days. I'm not fasting for me. I'm going to fast that God, that God would do something. You figure out what area you want to break through. I'm going to fast and pray. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be up early, many hours before the sun's up. I'm going to be praying for you, and I'm going to be fasting for you for the next 21 days while you get these principles. The principle works in the natural, and I'm going to be praying the spiritual. Listen, I, I te- the third day, testimony started pouring in like crazy. I mean, it's just crazy stuff. You wouldn't hardly believe. Then by the fifth day, the sixth day, the seventh, I mean, just as a matter of fact, what happened is so many of those people started saying, you know what? I don't know what was happening, man, but by the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day, I had to say, man, I got to start fasting. Some of them started fasting as well, and they started calling back, man, a miracle. I mean, preachers and apostles and, and bishops are calling, Doc, you won't believe what happened? Yes, I will believe. And so, my friend, it's just been an incredible, incredible journey. And so then I got a group of them, we just finished out of that. And I said, okay, now, Doc, why don't you do a 21 day and let us do 21 days with you? So get a group of people and we'll go 21 days with you. I was like, oh, he went my 21 days. <laughs> they said, man, you wrote the book about you did 100 days before. I was like, yeah, that's before. <laughs> that's what I was praying for my wife. Hello. How do you know you get real serious, right? And that's when I found my ABCD. Adorable brown caramel delight. Come on. Man. <laughs> but we got some folks that had never experienced fasting before. And they said, This is crazy. And they started telling friends, so you gotta call this. They started calling friends, car and friends. And it just it's been going like like gangbusters. So we just believe in God that he'll start working in people's hearts and lives. But I believe 
that God wants to do something special in your life. You might only want to fast a meal. You might only fast. I mean, you might just do a meat fast. Right? The guy called me the other day. He said, I, well, excuse me, a lady called me the day. She said, for, for the last 13 days, I hadn't touched any bread, any sugar, and she said, or any meat. And she said, first three days, I said, yeah, your cravings. I said, because you're like I am. You're, you're addicted to that stuff. They made it to be addicting. And I said, when you finally get rid of it, I said, but what I learned to do is you just cry. And so I told the people that are part of the program, as, as my body was crying out for food, I was like, oh, God, give them the breakthroughs. And by the way, God gave me a teaching 17 different areas a person can have a break. I've never heard anything like it. But the Spirit of God brought me down to me. I sent that out, and they pick out the different area, one main area they want to have a breakthrough, and then the other three, because once you have one, it can, it can then multiply, and, and then you can use that as momentum. And it's just been happening. And so I wish for you, my friend, this year, 2019, let's believe God for this kind of breakthrough. Amen. So all we got to do is make sure our focus is right. Yes, and then our faith. And then, my friend, we got to be willing to fast. If it's not a total fast, now I, I do water and juice, by the way, because I do, I do I, I still travel around preaching. And where I was last week, I stacked up 22 inches of bricks and broke them. And the week before that, I laid on a bit of nails and put 100 pounds of bricks in my stomach. God broke it on us. I gotta have a little something, 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 right? So, 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 so every morning my wife makes me fresh carrot, celery, apple, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I drink water throughout the day, but then I get some juice when it came, but I'm just saying, just, just something, though, just, but, but you're focused. And then, and then we, I shut, just shut down the, shut down the box, shut it down. Spend more extra time in the Word. And so listen, you and I, this year, there's something that cries out and says, I want to, I want to this kind of right there. Uh, Smokey, what time is it? Uh, we have one minute. So okay, I just wanted to, I do this all the time, but I just had to get on board the old ship of Zion. And I'm going to mount the top of the highest mast. And I'm going to tell you if we keep our focus on him, because I'm telling you, I never thought I could fast until I got my eyes fastened on him. <laughs> when you turn your eyes upon Jesus, and the fall in his wonderful face. The things of this world will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Because they call him Adam, advocate, anointed, apostle, author, amen, alpha, ancient of days, and born of a woman. He's beginning, the begotten, the beloved, the branch, the bread, the bridegroom, the bright and morning star. He's the bishop of our souls. He's the cluster of camphor, chief cornerstone, counselor, covenant, chosen of God. But well, thank God, he's our Christ. Amen. Amen. He is, he, he's, he's the daysman, deliverer, day spring, day star, door, and the desire of all nations. He is the elect, ensign, everlasting of our father. He's our forerunner. But thank God, he's my friend. First fruits, faithful witness. He's the fountain of life issuing from the caves of death. He's God, gift of God, governor, guide, and our glorious Lord. He is help, hope, our husband, horn of salvation, healer, head of the church, heir of all things, high priest, hell's dread, heaven's wonder, but thank God he's the holy, most holy one of all. Somebody ought to say amen. He is I am, inherited, immortal, invisible, image of God's person. He is Judah, judge, just, but more than ever, he's Jesus. Come on, somebody. He's king, king of kings, king of glory, king everlasting. He is lily, lamb, land, lawgiver, living stone of the Lord of glory. He is messenger, mediator, master, messiah, mighty God, mercy's paradox. He's the Nazarene. He's the offspring of David, omega, only begotten of God. He's both offering and offerer. He's priest. Passover, potentate, prophet, propitiation, prince of life. He's a physician. He's righteousness, rabbi, ransom, rest, root of Jesse, root of David, refiner, rose of sharing, blossom in the shades of hell, who quenched for all believers the fires of hell and clothed that crate of damnation with foliage, fruit, and flower. Yes, he's the stone, shepherd, seed of a woman, sufferer, savior, sinless sacrifice, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is teacher, tabernacle, testator, treasure, tree of life. He is the witness. 
He is the word. He is the way. He is the wonderful wisdom of God. He is the wonderful one. Without which this human mind cannot comprehend. He is. It's the sweetest name on mortal tongue. Sweetest cow ever sung. Jesus. And when nobody, when nobody cared, he cared. Come on. 
And now that you got a green tag, I'll come over. <laughs> and so he said, Dad, you, you did not, I said, I told you I would not come one time till you got a green tag and a seal. Mm. What you think about that for a few minutes? When you get Christ in your life, you got a green tag on, and a seal. Yes, I mean, you got something about that occupy this space. Come on. You know, when you get down, let me tell you something. If you've never been to Nebio University, you need to visit there somewhere. <laughs> let me tell you, when you go to Nebio, yes, you get up different. <laughs> See, when you go to Nebio, yes, that means you, you're down and you got to look up. Yes, because let me tell you something. Lady asked me one time, she said, how do you memorize so many scriptures? I said, ma'am, I got a degree from Nebio University. <laughs> and she was trying to figure out, I've never heard of Nebio. I said, well, that's why you don't understand what I did. <laughs> so you got to understand something. I know when a brother started praying that he been to Nebio before. When a brother started praying that he been to Nebio, he don't talk to God like he's a stranger. He talks to God like he's his friend. Yeah. You know, I love when my grandfather used to pray. Yeah. He would say, God, <laughs> this is your grandson, bud. Yeah. Back in your present again. Yeah. And God, we didn't bought fertilizer and we bought seeds and we bought the money from Bradfield at the bank. Now God, I didn't plant the seeds. I didn't turn the crop by. Yeah. If you don't bring rain, me and your name both gonna be murdered that bank. <laughs> and he would get up and start saying one of them old Negro hymns. Yeah. But then the day or so he saw rain. Yeah. Oh, he had a relationship with his God. Yeah. Yeah. Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yeah. teach us today yes. how to fast and pray. Yeah. And watch you do what only you do, Lord. Oh, Lord. We call miracles. But it's just an everyday deal with you. Mm. Father, you are the God oh, thank you. that makes a way out of no way. Mm. Father, I thank mm. you for the fire. Mm. I thank you, Lord, for the trials that my sons have gone through. Mm. I thank you for the nights when they were struggling with their mind, wondering, How, what do we do next? Mm. But they persevered. Thank you, God. Because they believed in oh, you. Yeah. You had a plan and a purpose for that fire. Thank you. And who would they do? You question why the fire. But be excited what you're going to do through the fire. Mm. God, your word didn't say we wouldn't go through trials and tribulation. Mm. But your word said you wouldn't leave us there. Yeah. Father, trials would be looked at one or two ways. Mm. A stepping stone or a stumbling block. Mm. If we see our trials bigger than our God, mm. they become a stumbling block. Mm. If we see our trials mm. small and our God big, it's a stepping stone. Yeah. So let us walk out here today, whatever we're going through, and realize. You're going to use it for a stepping stone. Thank In you. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Peace out before you leave.